Uh, I'm uh, one of the Facebook's capacity and performance engineers. And uh, Vivek, if you think you have a problem, I suspect that my VP is trying to get rid of me uh, by bribing Ryan to put me last over here, right? Because I'm literally the last thing between you and free booze. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's go and uh, get the show on the road. So what I'm gonna talk to you about is in general, my history has been, I've been a performance engineer for a long time. And what I do at Facebook is mostly yell at people. Uh, super job, like I have the best job at Facebook. I basically tell people, no, you can't have the servers and uh, you know, and go away, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And so that's, my, that's like a really good job if you can have it. Um, and early this year, I ended up working on um, a product called Lookback Videos. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it because I also have a little bit of academic background. And when we finished the product, I just couldn't let it go because I had to understand why did this work? Because it shouldn't have, right? Uh, and it wasn't just me, it was everybody who worked on it on infrastructure side who just felt like this is, there's no way. So I'm gonna tell you a bit about the product, what were the constraints, and then uh, what was the infrastructure, because that was the piece that really matters. But then fundamentally I've come to the conclusion, and I kind of feel almost like Keith Adams uh, defending C++. Uh, my whole life I've been saying people are crazy, like you cannot trust them, like they're insane. Give me the systems, give me the servers, like CPUs don't lie to you. Um, it turns out the CPUs are the easy part. And uh, I'm gonna come here and tell you like all the technology, everything we've talked about, that is actually easy. The tricky part is something else, and I'm gonna kind of mention that. And uh, I'm gonna conclude the talk. So first of all, look back video, right? Um, I always say I'm the most antisocial person at Facebook, so there is no video for me because I don't have enough material on the, <laughs> on the side. This is after four years working for the company. But basically, 62 second video, all of your highlights, everything in your history uh, from Facebook is going to be there. So um, if you have you know, started to open your account in college, you may have gotten uh, out of college, gotten your first job, gotten your first place, maybe even gotten married, had a first child and so on. This has all happened over the 10 years, right? And so we would like to highlight those moments for you and give you a 62 second video. Uh, again, most important events. Uh, it should be available in almost any device. And the reason why I say this is because this is a room of techies and somebody will say, I have clapped together this little thing over here and I couldn't watch it on that. No, anything standard, anything that uh, you know normal people have. Um, <laughs> And it all had to be delivered on uh, February 4th, 2014, because that was the 10 year anniversary of Facebook. Now in numbers, uh, just let's talk technology, uh, we ended up rendering, uh, if you didn't have a lot of material, you got a little postcard like I did, but we ended up rendering 720 million videos. Uh, at peak, we were rendering nine million videos per hour. Uh, we had to store this video somewhere, which about 11 petabytes of storage was used. Uh, eventually ended up with more than 450 gigabits uh, of network egress, uh, and you see the numbers over here. Uh, what was funny was in the beginning, people were thinking like, well, maybe we'll get 10% of the people sharing these videos. Uh, for about a week, my Facebook feed was nothing but those videos, and I'm sure it's a similar situation for some of you. And when you look at these numbers, and if you are an engineer, you look at it and go like, you know, yeah, you know, it's kind of a little bit complex, uh, but fundamentally, people have rendered 720 million videos. I would argue that on, on probably just on, on YouTube, you can find 720 million cat videos if you really search for it. <laughs> so it can be done, right? There is nothing technologically particularly challenging about it, except you have a few constraints. You have less than one month. As a matter of fact, we had three weeks, right? Uh, and, and you actually have to use existing resources, hardware, and people. Um, Jay gets really annoyed when we bring site down. <laughs> like, he really, really doesn't like it. So while we are doing this, uh, we're not allowed to uh, take down any part of Facebook. Um, project must be a surprise, so whoever's working on it, uh, you cannot talk about it. Now that is actually not that big of a problem because you have only three weeks, so you're working pretty much around the clock. Like, you're not really talking to anybody except other people on the project. Um, your partners cannot be negatively impacted, right? These videos are coming from somewhere, and so, so you at some point in time have to call your CDN partners like Akamai and say, by the way, you may have somewhere between, oh, I don't know, maybe an extra one gigabit per second traffic and one terabit per second. Somewhere in that range we'll put on your network. And you know, needless to say, they come back and go like, could you narrow it down? And it's like, sure, between two and 999, right? <laughs> like, um, so we've done that, and uh, project cannot slip, right? And uh, I, I wanna stress this, um, how many projects have you been on uh, that had to do something like this that haven't slipped? Like, 
You know, and so you look at it and go like, okay, so project, like who cares, right? Every, every project has overslept. Every original deadline is just, you kind of enjoy the sound of them whooshing by, right? It's really, really <laughs> great. Um, but let me repeat this. This is an anniversary project, and I'm sure that at least some people in the audience have figured out you can't show up two weeks later and say, I thought about it really long and hard, and here is the vacuum cleaner. You know, it's maybe two weeks late, but look how pretty it is. It doesn't quite work that way. So, so this was a hard deadline. This is like February 4th, and uh, the whole thing starts with uh, one of our product engineers, and so you'll see that infra team, which you've pretty much seen a large part of us over here, um, the infra team tends to be like this old, jaded, uh, scarred, we've been around a lot, of, a lot of different projects and, and kind of experienced a lot of uh, painful things in life, but then we have the product part. That's the hipster part of Facebook. So uh, they, uh, they come to my desk and they say like, you know what, we're gonna make some videos, could we have some servers, right? As I said, I'm a capacity engineer. And you kind of look at it and go like, okay, what are you doing? Who are you, what are you doing, what do you want, right? And so now um, they explain like, well, we'd like to make some videos for, for the users and we'd really like them to kind of have an algorithm that's sort of, sort of kind of product, kind of, well, you know, it's not really done, but you know, we'll refine it and it's gonna work, but we just need to render uh, some videos. And it's like, okay, how many videos? And uh, the nice thing about the product people, as far as they're concerned, infra is really easy, right? From my perspective, product is really easy. It's like engineering principle, anything I don't work on is trivial, right? And so, uh, <laughs> so they come to you and they say, well, we would like one video for every user. And I'm looking at them and waiting for them to start laughing, right? Because that, that's just kind of funny. I mean, I have 1.3 billion users. And I said, what do you mean you want one video for every user? And then they used the magic phrase and in tone with the Tolkien reference that uh, Vivek had before, the magic phrase like Melon in, uh, in the books for us is, Mark really liked the idea, right? At this point in time, uh, you don't really have a lot of options, let me tell you. And so you look at them and you go like, okay, what videos? And so they explained the idea and I said, so, you just need servers? Like, where are you getting the data from, right? And they're like, well, yeah, just servers. I mean, what else could be the problem in this whole situation? <laughs> and, um, and at that point in time, you start thinking, because again, uh, you've heard a little bit about, uh, about our storage, right? So the project that these guys have just completed and super optimized uh, F4 to not be high throughput, this person is just telling me like, by the way, I'm gonna need really high throughput from these servers. And as far as he's concerned, that's not his problem, right? And they have this incredible belief that as infra people will just make it happen, right? Uh, I look at the, you know, like, which database are you getting this data from? Well, obviously UDB. No, obviously not, right? Because, uh, you know, Mark would kill you and the data is not organized like that. And so what we do is, uh, you know, I have to give you a lot of compute. Um, because I like my job, I don't like wasting money, I, I don't have these servers sitting on the floor uh, and I can just give them to you, right? And not only that, I have three generations of servers, um, all specified and stuff. What are you gonna do with this data coming in uh, and out of the, the network at the top of Rex, which is, like there are all of these questions that I'm thinking about and the guy's waiting for his 10 or 15 servers or you know whatever he wants, right? And so I tell him, like, look, go away, come back in two hours, uh, and I just, I just need to get infra <laughs> involved, right? And so what happens next is uh, we get pretty much every part of infrastructure in there. I had cache, I had database, I had network, uh, photo storage, right, both parts, because Haystack and F4 had to be involved, had uh, capacity engineers for all of those teams. Um, and so, as you can imagine, this is going really well, because at this point in time, each one of those people have brought the expert for their little area. We have 40 people in a room, and uh, I'm sure you've never seen the situation where 40 engineers are all agreeing on everything, right? Because we all certainly don't have opinions on the stuff that other people are doing, right? Um, and, uh, but in any case, we realize, okay, we'll have to do a lot of heroics over here. And so what we do have is we monitor everything. Uh, one thing about uh, running any kind of operation of Facebook sites is monitor everything. So in any, this is a graph of one of our um, front-end clusters. I actually can take down multiple of my front-end clusters, turn them into compute really overnight, um, and basically have them rendering the videos. Uh, and, and it was very clear we will need to do something like this. What else are we going to need to do? Um, 
it all looks very impossible, and as a matter of fact, uh, like all of us in fresh sitting in there and going like, yeah, this is so not happening, right? But, you know, whatever, Mark wants it, so let's give it a fair shot. Um, and uh, at this point in time, it's so not happening, we have actually one of the, I think, critical events that happens, and this is one of our TPMs, sees us all in a room yelling at each other, or uh, politely holding a conversation, as we like to think of it, and, uh, and she walks in there and basically says, look, Everybody quiet, and uh, she's about this tall, tiny, but you don't mess with her. And, uh, and she goes like, okay, I want everybody out of this room except one person per team. First thing that was done, like everybody get the hell out of this room, all of you, right? And so, you know, we all leave, we've chosen a different capacity engineer to stay in there. Um, and the first thing that she did is like, look, you're talking over each other, you're not making any progress, this is now two days in, we are yelling at each other. Like, just get out, and I don't want anybody talking about anything you're not directly working on. So if you own cash, I don't care about your opinion about anything else except cash. Which, you know, you would think as an engineer, that's kind of a logical thing, and looking back, it's like, why didn't we come up with it? Well, we didn't, because we know everything the best about every single part of the system, right? It's like, come on, how can anybody else be better than I am, right? And, um, and so what we do is we say, fine, I'm gonna trust the product to work on the code and, and start constantly improving the code because the code is in really bad shape right now and it needs to become a lot faster. Don't have the time to really do performance analysis for them because you know, it's, it's really something that they have to work on. Uh, but let's, let's try and render 150 videos. So that's what they're working on. We can get the machines for that. Um, we had a whole bunch of incremental renderings in there uh, in the process there are different people working on compressing the code. There are different people working on all of this stuff. Um, you have to divide and conquer, right? Um, we didn't know how we're going to get all of the data and uh, you know, people can tell you, how, how will you get this data now in F4? Finally, you put it in there and you are not optimizing for the throughput and now you have to get it all out at a high throughput rate. Can you do it or not? Um, if you're solving a problem like this, make sure that you have luck on your side. Uh, this does not happen without a certain amount of luck. And so we've had two different aspects of luck. Number one, uh, it was happening in January, and uh, Q1 is when our orders hit the floor, like in the middle of January, and we tend to kind of preload uh, in the year, and so we got a lot of servers coming at this particular point in time. And so what I had to do is basically take all of the servers and not give them to the people that they were uh, intended for. We, you know, and, and so normally that would be a problem. Um, but as I said, like this is a technical, technical aspect of this was not hard. Like I have the servers, I have the network, I have the monitoring. I mean, all of this existed. And not only that, we know that it can happen. And yet you have three weeks. And I will guarantee you, if you think like upfront, yeah, this is doable in three weeks, you're not really thinking through all of this, right? You, you're just not. Because every one of us on infra was going like, yeah, absolutely not. So what? What really happens? Why did this work? And, and it got me thinking to the whole thing. Fundamentally, uh, when Niha jumped in and started yelling at all of us um, and, and got us to quiet down, we basically had to do our part without interfering and without blocking anybody else, right? And, and that was the first good step. At the point in time, and I'm focused only on my part and getting my part done, I can't be helping my colleagues to do their job, right? Um, the other thing was that you had to have this incredible level of trust that everybody else on this project will do everything they can to get it done, right? And that's, that's pretty incredible, right? In most engineering organizations, this works uh, because engineers, as much as we can be defective as people, we like to get problems solved. That's what we are trained to do. That's what we want to see done. So, so this I can do as well. Um, I went to all of the teams and basically people said, look, I, I need my servers. And I'd be like, that's great. And you're getting them in a month. And it's like, what, you know, did they screw? No, nobody screwed up. I'm taking your servers and giving it to the other team. I didn't have a single team say, you know, this is not acceptable, right? I want my servers now. Every single one of the teams at Facebook, and this is a whole bunch, right? As I said, in Q1, I'm getting a lot of servers. Every single one of the teams said like, what is going on? And we said FB10 and they're like, oh yeah, I heard about it. Do you guys need any help? Right, so I now have every engineering company saying like, look, if you need something, let me know, we'll help, right? Second thing is, we had to actually stop, like the servers get turned around in every three years, and we had just started decommissioning on one of the large clusters in, uh, in Oregon. I had to call Oregon and say, guys, stop all of the stuff. Like, all of those wires we just pulled out, like, let's put them back in. Uh, let's re-image those servers, let's turn them in compute, and by the way, 
I can't extend the deadline for the cluster to be down because I need that space. And so I need them to be running for two more weeks. And by the way, when they're done, I still need you to complete your job, but now in two weeks less time, right? So, and I had to have the team that said, and it was, you know, it's at Facebook, the way it goes is you basically said, look, look, you know, I'm just about to screw you people, so here's what I need from you. And then you tell me what you need. And if I need to fly 500 people from Menlo Park to you to get this done, we'll get it done. But this has to happen, right? Without it, it cannot happen, right? Um, I'm basically asking them to work around the clock for me, right? They're in a completely different location. They're not like tied to me in any way, shape or form, but they actually did that. Um, the most important thing for me is management involvement. There is literally none. Like think about it. And this is not to this, my managers for once in my life, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if Jay's here, like they're absolutely lovely, smart, intelligent people. It's performance review time right now. So, um, <laughs> So they're absolutely wonderful, but let me point out this, right? If this is all happening in three weeks. If at any point in time somebody says, I'm not gonna do this, and you now go to your manager who goes to their manager and so on, and then we meet all together, it's a week gone by and this is really not happening, right? And so if you're a manager on a project like this, think about this long and hard, because actually this was the aspect that I really was wondering about. Why did nobody say no? Right? Why didn't any one of these people say, no, you know, this is unreasonable, this is crazy, go away? Nobody did, and, I, and I'll mention why. And, um, and TPM, right? The, the TPM person who actually has social skills and he's just looked at us and, and understood what we were doing wrong as all of the engineers and what is required to get the project done. Um, why did it work? Um, it worked because, honestly, um, our VP, who you'll probably see around very soon, uh, has a reputation, and I'm sure this is completely undeserved, uh, that if you walk into his office with, with another engineer, and certainly never happened to anybody, and you're arguing about technical issue, that uh, apparently he would say something to the line of get the hell out of my office and do your uh, damn job, right? And so as you're, if you're an engineer, we really didn't have any other options, right? You, you do the right thing when, when all of the other options are removed, you basically have no choice. So we couldn't argue because if I went to my VP and said he's being an ass and they said she's being an ass and stuff like that, we'd all be laughed out of his office, we'd all be yelled at, and we'd kind of look really pretty stupid. And, and in general, you don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing that is, I think, critical, and since I've had a confirmation in a different company from a friend, you can only do this if you're willing to take a risk. There was at least 40 people, probably more, who were willing to take this risk and say, I'm gonna set aside everything I'm supposed to be doing, I'm gonna be working on this, and when this spectacularly fails, I'm not gonna be penalized for it. And so if you're a manager, that's what you wanna do. Like, that's when you know that you're doing a good job. You don't have to come and help me, but just don't kind of stand in the way. And I think a lot of places, like the other place uh, where I was, I was listening to com uh, comments from a person is, people are afraid to do something because of what are the penalties going to be. And in this particular case, it was just, hey, let's give it a shot. Three days before, we actually knew we had it. Um, probably the most impactful project that I worked my whole life, I will never quite understand why. You know, all of these photos already existed in people's feeds and stuff, right? But uh, as I said, humans are not always logical. Um, and uh, what I really wanted to share with you here is that technology is actually easy. Technology existed, we didn't really, other than the product code, we didn't really do anything new there. Everything else existed. The reason why this worked was because 40 people willed it to work against all of the odds. And it's all about people. All of us have good engineers, and yet we've all been on failing projects. It is all about people. So with that, let's go get some uh, nice booze, and uh, let's enjoy meeting some of those nice people over here.